Confirmed coronavirus cases now top 8,000 here in Florida. The Department of Health released new numbers late this morning. The state is also reporting 27 new deaths since 6 o'clock last night. Hillsborough County is now up to 372 confirmed cases, and that's the highest total in the Bay Area. We know so many of you have questions right now, so we are going to the experts for answers. Joining us right now is Dr. Lockwood. He's the Senior Vice President of USF Health and the Dean of the USF Health Morsani College of Medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. I know you are so busy right now, but we have a lot of questions we're hoping you can help us answer. A lot of medical experts, including you, are saying that you need to assume that everyone is infected. And this may be a hard idea to grasp, especially if you're someone who is following those social distancing guidelines to a T. So why is this so imperative? Well, so the test we use currently to, to identify patients that are infected is an RNA test. It's what we call a nucleic acid test. And it only detects patients that are actively infected. So they have to be shedding the virus. Um, and it's not the, the most sensitive test. So there, there's still a fair number of patients who test negative who are still infected. And that's probably about 30%. And it has to do with the way we extract the, the virus from the nose and the mouth when we do the swab and so forth. Um, secondly, we're only testing the sickest patients, right? We're telling people to come in if they're older and, and have comorbidities, they have diabetes or heart disease or uh, lung disease or they're hospitalized. So we're not telling folks that are mildly symptomatic to come in. And then um, a lot of folks are infected and never show any symptoms. We're now reporting that to be about 25% of folks in the United States, but it's probably much higher. In Iceland, where they did much more aggressive testing, it was about 50%. And we think in China, it may have been as high as 86%. So probably half of patients um, we don't even know are infected or infected. Now, it turns out they're less infectious. Um, they have about half the rate of conducting the infection to other folks, but they still can infect people. So it, 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 you have to assume everybody's infected. Keep social distancing. Uh, if you want to wear a mask in public, do that. Uh, wear a bandana, whatever you want. Wash your hands frequently, but assume every, every surface you touch in public is infected and everybody you meet in public is infected. And if you do that, you'll lower your own risk dramatically. And also, I was reading an editorial piece that you wrote that I would love for you to kind of break down for us because you were saying that a major issue is we don't know how many people are infected and a lot of it has to do with a certain type of testing that's not happening. So can you break that down for us and explain why it's so crucial? So again, we're, we're testing for the virus. We're testing for the viral RNA and that means you have to be actively infected but we're not using the normal test we would use in most other epidemics, which is to see whether or not you have antibodies to the virus. If you have antibodies to the virus, and particularly um, if you have enough antibodies and the right types of antibodies, what we call IgG antibodies, then you very likely have cleared the, the, the virus. If you're producing large quantities of antibodies, you've got about a 99.9% .9 chance of not having the virus anymore. Um, so you're not infected and you won't be infected. And those are the folks that can go back to work first. So um, as we begin to strategize about how we get out of this uh, uh, epidemic and how we go back to work, the first tranche of folks that can go back to work are the people that are immune. They had the infection. They probably didn't even know they had the infection or they were very mildly infected, uh, affected. And then we now confirm they have antibodies and they can go back to work. Um, and so that's a critical piece of information that we need to know because we clearly have a lot more people that are infected than we currently can estimate. Um, and identifying that population, um, confirming that, that they're free of the virus, getting them back to work will be a critical part of uh, how the economy starts to revive. And that's something that we all hope will happen sooner rather than later. And we've all been, you know, practicing the safer at home orders here in Hillsborough and Pinellas for about a week now. But the entire state doesn't actually start until 12.01 a.m. Friday. So what do you think about the governor waiting to issue this order? Well, I think I'm, I'm glad he did. I think it's critically important that we that we now lock down the whole state. Um, but I am reassured by the fact that the the counties with the highest level of viral activity so Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, um, Lee, uh, certainly Hillsborough, uh, Pinellas, um, Orange County, um, have all had lockdown orders.
measures. So we've all pretty much been locked down for about a week. Um, we need, you know, at a minimum to be locked down for two weeks to break the chain of infection and ideally a month. Um, and so, you know, I think it's an important thing that the governor has done. I, I, I congratulate him for it. Um, but uh, hopefully, um, you know, we've already taken the, the critical steps in the most vulnerable areas and um, and those steps, you know, have been in place for a while now. And also you did touch on this just a moment ago, but masks are a huge talker right now. Who should wear them if we should all be wearing them when we're going out? You know, the U.S. Surgeon General spoke about it again yesterday. The CDC may be changing their recommendations. What are your specific thoughts on that? Most important thing is hand washing, hand washing, hand washing, hand washing um, as often as you can with soap and water for 20 seconds. So sing happy birthday to me twice. That's 20 seconds. That's the single most important thing you can do. Assume all surfaces in public are contaminated. So use hand sanitizer if you're out and about and you can't wash your hands. But the, the covering your face is important, um, not so much because it's going to protect you from being infected, but it's going to protect other people in case you're infected and don't know it. And remember, half of infections probably are undocumented. The patients don't have any symptoms or they have minimal symptoms. So it, it I think, is a really good strategy for avoiding and breaking the chain of infection and reducing the number of folks that infected people come into contact with. Now, we don't have enough face masks, surgical face masks, so you can actually put a bandana on like like you would a Gasparilla, um, except move it up over your, uh, over your nose. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, if you, if you do have a surgical mask, use it. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we don't want to encourage that because we don't have enough. And we're, we're constantly trying to, if for, from the healthcare perspective, we're constantly trying to save our, our personal protective equipment, our PPE, uh, including our, our face masks. And uh, a lot of what I've been doing the last couple of weeks is being the radar Riley of USF Health to assemble as much PPE as I can for my docs. Um, and we have about a three week supply. So we, we really want to conserve it. But, you know, if you have a, a bandana, put that around it. Uh, you may look silly, um, but uh, you may be saving a life. And uh, I, I think it's it is a good idea. I, I fully support the Surgeon General's idea. And, and I think the CDC is probably pretty close to recommending it as well. But most importantly, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, and assume that every surface is contaminated. Not going to lie, I don't want to put my hands on anything right now thinking about that. It's crazy to think how many people could, you know, be infected and just not know it. And not to get ahead of ourselves here, but there's a lot of talk about resurgence in the fall, and I know that has a lot of people pretty concerned. So is this something we're going to have to come to expect every year? Um, well, yes and no. I, I think that it's likely that we will see a resurgence. I expect that as we get into the summer months, because of ultraviolet light, because of the heat and, and humidity, the virus will begin to, to uh, be less um, contagious. It will spread at a much slower rate. Um, and that's something that's been observed with coronaviruses and influenza and other viruses. Um, so we, we do anticipate that. It certainly seems that, that the infection in China occurred within a very narrow latitude band of, you know, kind of colder areas and not in more southern and more humid areas of China. So there's the anticipation that we'll get better in summer. But of course, South America and Africa are going to go into their winter seasons and the virus will pick up activity there. Then as we go back into our cold season, um, and it'll start to come back um, into North America. Now, hopefully we'll be ready for it with all kinds of tests, much better testing, much more available testing, much better public health, uh, contact sourcing, contact tracing, isolation of the patients. And we are, I think, on the verge of having a whole battery of different drugs that are going to be effective. Um, increasing evidence looks like chloroquine may work. There are a number of, of uh, really interesting drugs that are antiviral that seem to be very effective um, and will be, we're in the midst of clinical trials. Some of those are occurring right now at Tampa General um, with our docs and uh, hopefully they'll be beneficial as well. We're also beginning to use convalescent plasma 
This is something we're also uh, starting up at Tampa General um, to be able to treat patients uh, that are acutely ill. So I think in the fall, we'll have uh, a, a lot better handle on identifying cases and isolating them to prevent the spread of the infection. We'll have much better medications. So I'm, you know, I'm not nervous about the fall. I'm anticipating this. If it doesn't happen, great. If it does, I think we'll be ready for it. By um, early winter, we hope to have a vaccine. Um, and hopefully, once that vaccine is available, everybody will take advantage of it, like they should be taking advantage of the influenza vaccine. Um, and shame on everybody if they haven't had their influenza vaccine. Um, and uh, and then I expect that, that if it does recur in future years, it'll be really much less significant, much less severe. Uh, there'll be much more herd immunity, much less spread, um, and eventually, uh, you know, it'll become more like the flu or maybe even less common than the flu. Well, that's definitely a good thing. Encouraging words there, doctor. Now, Dr. Lockwood, last question for you. When do you think this will peak here in the state of Florida? So we have um, pretty good modeling. Um, we even, our College of Public Health has excellent modeling now for Hillsborough County. And it, it, the, the, the peak is expected around May 2nd, um, may occur a little bit sooner than that. But at, based on our current trends, particularly in Hillsborough County, we think we'll be in pretty good shape. The, the rate of increase in Hillsborough has not been remotely similar to what's happened in places like New York. Um, and we believe that it will not overwhelm the number of beds and ICUs um, and ventilators that we have. And so that, that curve we think has already is being flattened and will continue to be flattened. Now, having said that, it is absolutely critical that we maintain social distancing, that people wash their hands in public, uh, wash their hands when they're out in public, uh, use hand sanitizer, cover your face if you can, um, because that's that's why we're seeing these good numbers. And I think uh, kudos to uh, the mayor and, and our county commissioners for implementing uh, our stay at home policies early enough that we, I think, uh, are going to be in pretty good shape. Now, a lot of assumptions there, but the most important assumption is that your viewers stay at home as much as is humanly possible um, and don't go out and spread and spread the virus. But if we do that and if we can maintain that level of of social distancing, hand washing, covering up, um, I think Hillsborough County should be in pretty good shape through the peak. And then obviously after May uh, 2nd, we expect that uh, things will get better and better and better. And again, people that are immune can start going back to work. Then as the R value, the, the, the number that everybody talks about as an indicator of, inf of infectiousness, as that drops less than one, as when one person doesn't even infect one person, then um, the non-immune healthy folks can go back. And then finally, in, uh, in a few more weeks or a month um, after that, the more vulnerable folks can go back. So, you know, I, the, we definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel in Hillsborough. I'm still worried about uh, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, particularly uh, Miami and uh, Broward. But um, but I think uh, we probably will be able to avoid uh, any kind of catastrophic overburdening of the uh, hospitals uh, in Hillsborough County if we can just keep everybody at home. Very glad to hear that, doctor. Thank you so much. We have another rough month ahead, but. Like the doctor just said, we, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We appreciate all of your insight and you joining us. Thanks so much.